Pakistan and the Pakistan user group. Uh, thanks for uh, you know, having me on this uh, today's session. And also special thanks to Faisal, Ammar, and all of the rest of the, uh, the organizers and the Pakistan user group as well for having uh, this event and having me as well. And uh, also providing me uh, to speak in this uh, wonderful event. So let's get into the session. So today uh, we will look at the basic ad and advanced warehouse inventory counting in Dynamics 365 supply chain management. So I will cover on the uh, basic and the advanced warehouse and the differences and why we do need to do the counting. So all these things will be covered. So let's get into the, um, the session. And before that, I'll speak a bit about myself. So I'm Kasim Pazirana and I'm a D365 and Power Platform Evangelist. And currently I'm working at DXD Technology as a consultant. I started my journey in Microsoft Business Applications from Dynamics X and have experience uh, working with the product for around nine to 10 years. And I've got experience in working with both ERP and the CRM as well. And also included, uh, I mean, I was also in, involved in the Power Platform implementations as well. I do blogging as well uh, using D365Bits. So you can find me at uh, d365bits.com and also in LinkedIn as well using the links I have uh, shown here. And uh, also heavily involved in the community events as well. I also co-organize in the uh, Sri Lanka uh, BISAPS user group as well. And uh, part of the ASEAN's uh, Microsoft uh, user group as well. So a lot of uh, community events I do as well. So, and also I enjoy uh, playing cricket as well and running and hiking as well. So if you, free, if you have anything in this interest, so please feel free to uh, chat with me as well on those topics as well. So let's get into the, the session. So let's look at uh, what what's the point of counting you know the stock so let's look at on on this uh, we'll stand we'll start from here so why what is the point of you know counting the stock a stock take is a, a kind of a mechanism that we use to make sure that stock on hand uh, you know registered or recorded in your system is accurate so you need to make sure that your stock on hand uh, which is in the system is accurate so that's the the primary objective of that. And imagine if you have a new stock which is arriving at your docks and you know you need to uh, check off uh, those at the point of receipt to make sure that you have actually received everything you've ordered. And uh, also this process increases the stock on your hand, right? Of the businesses and records your purchases as well. So when a sale is made, the stock will be reduced from your stock, right? So the important part is to you know, make sure that your account is correct in the system. And in some cases, in retail businesses, there can be some time like uh, when the actual physical stock on hand will no longer matches with your system. So let's look at why it's not matching with your system. So it might be someone is stealing, right? It's a theft. Or maybe someone is forgetting to record the delivery of new stock or some other various reasons it can be. So you might not have the accurate stock take, right? So there will be uh, inconsistencies of your stock and bring your inventory back in line, right? So, so that's the problem with that. So, so before, be, because of that, you will have that um, stock counting because you need to make sure that your stock in the system is accurate. And also, this is also uh, helping in, in terms of, uh, making you know to, to make better buying decisions throughout the year so if you look at your stock and if you identify and understand what your stock levels then it can help you you know uh, getting back uh, you know correcting it and then also uh, making a right decision for your stock and the next question do we really need to do a stock take every year right so that's another question right so usually you have seen most of the you know the stock takes uh, you know carrying out once a year the reason is that you need an accurate stock count maybe for financial reasons as well uh, the, uh, the financial reasons as well so you need to make sure that you have the accurate stock count every year at the end of the year so it, the company is uh, you know used to 
do a yearly uh, stock take, right? So that's the th that's what they're usually doing. But there are other ways as well, right? So the other ways are uh, that you need to make sure that you know uh, the um, the stock take that you do. Uh, you can also do in smaller or more frequent stock counts. So you can do more smaller as well as frequent stock counts. So that's where the the counting uh, comes in or the, the periodic counting comes in, right? So the periodic counting helps you to, you know, throughout the year, you do the inventory counting throughout the year, make sure that you have a better uh, stock, you know, in your system. So better accurate stock in your system. So for that, you can do uh, smaller, more frequent stock counts throughout the year. So that helps you and make sure that you have the accurate stock count as well as um, each directly impacts your profit as well, right? So this is the, the important part. So now we understand what is the point of the counting stock and do we really need to do a stock take every year? So we need we know now what our stands are, right? And let's get into the annual or the periodic counting. So annual counting, as I, I was telling earlier, so annual counting or annual inventory taking is carried out usually to satisfy an accounting requirement, right? And every item in this process, every item you need to count. So that's the other thing. So every item you need to count. So imagine counting every item in your system will take a long time and it might disrupt your business or you might, if it's a bigger business, you might need to stop for a few days when you're doing the inventory counting. So that's a that's a loss of business for the, the business. And periodic counting, periodic counting, inventory taking in, into the continuous counting of stock to identify discrepancies. So you are continuously counting your stock to identify discrepancies. And you're also getting, because in the annual counting, you will not see any issues until you count at the end of the year. But in the periodic counting, what will happen? If you have any misplaced items, you can detect the, those soon and without needing for an uh, annual count. So that's really important, right? Because you can do that kind of account, uh, periodic counting, and then you can identify issues that you have. And if you've done that properly, this will eliminate the need of having a physical inventory count at the end. So maybe initially when you start, you might need to compare with the annual counting as well as the periodic counting and see how, how the result goes. And then at the end of the day, maybe after a few tries, you can eliminate of having the, uh, the physical inventory count at the end if you have a proper periodic counting, right? So let's look at the, the cycle count um, in, 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 deta in detail and understand what are the cycle count or what are the, the methodologies as well. We'll go into the methodologies as well later on. So what are the cycle count? So cycle count helps you to discover the discrepancies as soon as they occur, as I was telling earlier. So whenever you whenever you do a periodic counting, if there's an issue, you can identify. So identifying that issue will also help you because you can, uh, once you identify, because it's not taken too long, you can find the issue, what was the issue, and maybe you can correct those ones. So if you do it at the end, so what happens, you might not be able to go back and fix it because you don't know what has happened. It might have happened long time back. And not every item has to be counted in this process. So that's another thing. So it's not required to count all the items using this process. Usually, um, some of the standards, they say, you can achieve 95% of accuracy all times, right? So if you have 95%, you're satisfied. But you might need to check this with finance if it's a, if it's a correct approach, right? And if you're having a mature cycle count, you can eliminate having the annual physical inventory taking process, as I was telling earlier. But when you're trying initially, you might need to do some tries and see how it goes. And there are several methodologies methodologies you can use for the cycle counting as well. So I'll talk about um, those cycle counting uh, methodologies as well in the next step. So this is, these are the cycle count methodologies that we can see. Control group, location audit, random selection, diminution population, product categories, ABC analysis. So let me just briefly uh, tell what are the approaches, what are the methodologies these are, you know, we can use. Uh, 
Um, so basically, if you select the best way to perform the cycle counting, um, uh, if you think if you think about two companies like A and B, they may have the same SKUs or stock keeping units, right? And the items uh, released to the um, or the release products, but items are unitized in company A and company B. Items are counted as one C and two Z, like one and two. So you might be having a company that is unitized, right? Or you might be having a company which is counting one and two, you know, uh, counting those items individually. So therefore, if you take a look at A and B, which will be taking more time. So the company B definitely will be spending more time. So B, when you have that kind of a scenario, you might need to see which strategy or which methodology that you have to use. So depending on the company, so what I want to highlight is depending on the company, depending on your situation, depending on the warehouses, how it's structured or your operations, you might need to think about the methodology that you use, right? So that's the important part here. So any counting, so let's talk about the control group more. So any counting method that you use to start with small scale counting test, so you can use the control group. So if you are starting with a uh, count cycle count, you can start with a control group uh, kind of a method. So the control group can be used to, uh, as a starting point, and this shouldn't be usually a counting a method, right? And then uh, you can use uh, SKU selected using a uh, control group, and it should represent the true cross-section in the entire population. So that means you can have an expensive item, you can have a non-expensive item, you can have a fast-moving item, you can have a slow-moving item, and you, you have a, a long lead time item. So likewise, you have to have a good uh, cross-section as well. And location audit. So you can also find the second method is a location audit. So location audit, in this approach, you can divide the stock room or your warehouses in some logical method, rooms or racks or bins, and then on each counting day, you can count the SKUs found in those areas. And the random selection. So the random selection is another method that you can use. So probably the easiest form of the, uh, the cycle counting, you select uh, random items, but it should represent the cross section of your entire population. So that's the other thing that you need to identify, understand. You need to have expensive, as I was telling earlier, if you need to have a true cross section, you need to have a, uh, expensive items, non-expensive items, fast-moving items, slow-moving items as well as um, long lead items as well, long lead time items as well. And the next one is the diminishing population. So this is a, another versatile approach that you can use. It can be used as a standalone uh, procedure or used as a part of the product uh, category approach, right? So this is a, another approach that you can use and uh, usually uh, the diminishing population technique ensures all the items in the population are counted at least once per cycle, right? So that's what it does. And there's, a, there's another one is called product category. So the product category is basically by the look of the name as well. So it will look at the characteristic of your SKUs and then you can use this kind of a product category approach as well. I think ABC analysis is one of the, the uh, sophisticated method and uh, you've come across in the system as well in D365 Phenoms, ABC classification. So ABC classification can be also used in the cycle counting methodologies as well. So these are the cycle counting methodologies that uh, that you can follow. So let's move into the next um, the option, uh, ne next uh, from the system point of view. So from SCM D365 uh, Phenoms uh, uh, system point of view, we have warehouse management options. So there are options that you can, you know, uh, use to set up the um, the warehouses, right? So you can have warehouse management uh, WMS enabled warehouses, or you can have WMS not enabled or the basic warehouses. So that's the whole point that we are discussing: advanced or the basic warehouses. And then we can have uh, we, we can define the items to be WMS enabled items or WMS not enabled items right so these are the combinations that we have and uh, you need to uh, take that also into the consideration as well so before before we go into the into the details um so let me quickly run through on these um setups probably i'll go to the system uh, and uh, go through that that would be much better so let's go into the system 
and then you can have a quick check on these ones. So let's look at the warehouses. So if you look at number yeah, 24 is actually advanced warehouse enabled warehouse. So this is how you can identify if it's an, uh, enabled for the advanced warehouses. So if you look at number 11, so these are the, the, the two warehouses that we will use for the example. And it's, it's not actually enabled for the advanced warehouse. It's a basic warehouse, right? So we'll take these two and go into our uh, next uh, set of exercises. Uh, let's let's go through those ones. Um, there are a heap of other uh, item related setups as well. Quickly, maybe I'll go through one of them and then we can actually do some exercises and see how it goes with uh, the demo. So let's go to the release products and see the item setup. So in this scenario, usually we use this A triple one so that's the item i'm going to use just go into the item and i will show you the setups here so this is the release uh, product uh, detail and this is the item that we are talking about and let's look at the storage dimension group so here you would see that the warehouse management uh, has been enabled so that's that's one of the setups for if you want to enable an item for the ad advanced warehouses. So that's from the item level. And the other one, you can see here the reservation hierarchy, right? So the reservation hierarchy is another, another uh, option that you need to set up, right? It will define how uh, the sequences basically, uh, it'll go through the, um, the sequences as uh, reservation hierarchies will have that uh, sequence of reservations and uh, uh, show how, how it will be reserved based on the, the priorities or based on the sequence that you have set up here. So that's another setup that is critical to un identify if it's an advanced warehouse. Uh, if it's an advanced warehouse, you need to be setting up these ones. And let's go to the other one that is the um, under the warehouse here. You would have some other setups as well, like uh, unique sequence group ID and fixed product location so these ones will be also critical in your setup so i don't want to go i don't i'm not going to detail on these ones because i will go into the exercises but i'll just highlighting for you to identify and if you are a, if you are having an item which is set up for the wms enabled then these are the critical setups that you need to look at uh, in that sense so let's go into our usual the counting or the um, there's two two form of counting. So if you go to the inventory management, you go to the inventory management. There's two form of counting. So one is the counting uh, journal, and then the other one is the tag counting, right? So there are two methods that you can use, and those two methods, the tag counting, tag counting is actually basically differs. Uh, from like um, you need to have a physical tag if you're having if you're using the tag counting you need to have a physical tag on your item and during the counting needs you, you need to have that uh, value for the item and also the counted quantity so that's the tag counting uh, usually in the uh, containers kind of stuff you can use the tag counting but usually we are using the counting so most frequently using counting but the tag counting is special case so I'm going to go to the counting and then we'll go into the, the counting form first. So this is what you do when you're taking the uh, inventory uh, stock take maybe financially end or if you want to do periodically also you can do it but that's the basic uh, warehouses. So this, this is the approach that you use for the basic warehouses basically. So let's create the new counting journal. Let me take the number 24 and I'm enable my warehouse. Click OK. If you want to add, add an employee, you can do so. 
and you can you have a few options um, on hand or you can use the item so i'm going to use the on hand in this case and my item let me go to the item and see yeah item i'm going to filter for the a triple o one in this case and you would also need what is that counting group is one of the, the things that you can see and there's another another setup for the active counting code as well so let me go back to the release products go back and show you that uh, the counting group here so this is the counting group so you can define a counting group for for an item and in this case the counting group and you can see the counting code is period right so if you want to get leverage on these setups you can actually um, use these uh, filterations in that uh, when you're creating on hand counting journal because if you're having different um, set of groups, so you, you can define in different methods, uh, different ways. So this is uh, for the basic warehouses. You can use the counting um, group monthly or any other form that you want. You can define here. So let me click OK without considering the activate uh, counting code in this situation. So when I run, so you would see that the on hand actually generated the count here, right? So you can see that count probably will go to another screen just to duplicate tab and show you the on hand as well so that we understand what's the on hand as well at the same time. Let me go, let me copy the item and it's it until it comes. Yes, MF, that's fine. Yeah, let's wait until this comes. So just want to, hunt before, before that comes, I just, because I have done accounting for this already, so today, so that, that um, that's why, uh, but you can, you, you'll get it in, into the line, but let me run it in another way, uh, just to show you what will happen if I run with the counting code, because the, because the counting code, if you noticed earlier, this is actually considering for the period and the 30 days, since I have counted today, if I run this, let's see what will be the result. If, you are, if I'm considering the counting code here. So you wouldn't get anything because I've already counted. So if you enable the counting code, you won't get it. So it's uh, if you enable uh, the counting code for this calculation or the, this generation, then, then it will not generate anything. But if I'm uh, disabling the active counting code here, and if I have the counting group, it will come to the uh, general line. So that's what the two setups. Uh, so that you have to be careful when you're running. So if you are running, you should be running with the counting code activated, or you are running without the uh, without that only for the counting group. So you need to be uh, careful on when when you're running it. So let's uh, let check the item on hand at the same time. So let's go back and check the on hand to show you what the what the count is. Yeah. So if you look at in this situation, um, I have a count. Um, so actually, basically, I'm running for the 24. So you would see let me get to 24. Let's filter for the 24 first. So you can see, yeah. So you can see 201. So that's actually correct. But uh, this is without the location. But if I want to specify a location, that will actually give me the, uh, let's say, bulk location, this one. So you, you can get that. Uh, the bulk location is how much? 111, fixed inventory. So this is correct. So let's say, Maybe I counted as one, one, two. You can see that's the, the difference. So it will be posted back to the inventory with the cost price of 12 coming from the item itself. And let's post it. So that's the usual count. So I'm just getting an example with one item, but usually this is for the old items. So if you're running periodically, you can use that periodic counting as well using this, but uh, then it will be for that specific items depending on the methodologies that you will be following. So that posted, if I check now my own hand will be 112. Yeah, that's correct. So that's how uh, we check 
so if you notice that this 24 is actually also a advanced warehouse as well but i will use the, the counting journal as well so that's the, that's that's to uh, keep it in your mind so that you can use it for both right and let's go to the options that we can use uh, on the periodic uh, method that we can use few options to uh, for the cycle count plan so let's see why is the cycle count plan right so if you go to the warehouse management so let's go move from the standard inventory management let's go to the advanced management now advanced warehouse counting processes right so if i uh, go here we want to follow the uh is it counting you can see all the counting related when you do that so if we go to the cycle count plans here you can see the counting cycle count plans here so let's take quickly the cycle count plan so i have a random so i was talking about the uh, random earlier so i have a random actually uh cycle count plan let me also at the same time go to the open cycle count so whenever you generate that it actually comes to the open cycle count so that's what happens so basically if i remove these ones let me cancel all of them first so i've cancelled it so no more records here so i'm going to execute this random plan and you would notice that i have a cycle uh, the work kind of template as well attached as well and i have defined my product queries here so you can define the items here if you want if you don't want you can let it like let it be like this this situation or yeah depending on yeah how you want to run and you can also uh, this is actually excluding empty you can include empty uh, or only empty so depending on you know whatever the, the option that you select you can do that but let me quickly do it uh, so that we can go through there so quickly execute that so once we execute this let's see what will happen so let's see the message cycle count work has been created so that's been created that's great so you see that that's been already generated so let me take uh let's go to the hub so you have mobile device menu items maybe i can let me log into the this is actually the uh, simulation so you can use the you usually use a mobile uh, warehouse app but the same functionality if you want to try with a system admin right so you can use this uh, simulation but other than that you'll uh, using the uh, definitely using that uh, advanced warehouse mobile for the actual activities but this is for the demonstration purposes i'll be using this so let me log off and let me log in here so i'm actually logging for the 24 warehouse k24 and I enter the password and come here okay so let's go to the inventory we have the cycle count guided or cycle count blind and spot counting so in this case i'm going to use um cycle count guided let me take the cycle count guided so if you see that my item is a 2 let me go back to a 2 and find out how much because i don't know how many items but if you are in the warehouse you would know definitely how much that's the value but yeah, i want to enter something which is in the range uh, let me see COOP that is actually how many we have 10 so let me enter 21 because for a specific reason so I have 11 quantity more and it shows me count differs from the on hand quantity so that's based on how you uh, set up in the mobile device menu item um, probably I can show that and speed any item Let's see and cycle count. Cycle counting. So number of items one. So <clears throat> and also it will display the item number, display the license plate, and it will uh, attempt one time and tell you that this is uh, not the correct uh, count is different. So are you sure, right? So I'm gonna repeat it again. Twenty one, I think correct. Yeah, twenty one, and say. 
So I'm adding actually, I'm just gonna finish this one. So I added uh, 11 quantity, more than that. Mm, so this is for the second one. Uh, let me cancel this one for the moment. And we'll go back to this one. Uh, the open cycle count works, so let me refresh it. So once I refresh, the one will be disappearing. The other one, if you notice that I didn't go ahead with that one. So 61 is actually, will be in a, the closed cycle count, uh, not in the closed cycle count work. It should be in the closed cycle count work, but it will not be, but it will be in the, I'll come to that. It will be in the cycle count work pending review. So why was that? If you notice that uh, I'm logging as K24 in this. So let me go back to the system to show you the worker, how the work has been set up in this situation. So if you go to the KP, K24, so if you notice that maximum quantity limit is 10, but I've entered 21. So my on hand was 10, I've entered 21. So that's actually more than the maximum quantity limit that I can approve because I'm not a cycle count supervisor. Only the cycle count supervisor is the Julia. So I'm not a cycle count supervisor, but since I've entered more than that uh, quantity, that needs an approval. So let's go to the cycle counting here and you will accept that uh, count, you can accept or reject. So once you accept what will happen, it'll go back and post this 0113 journal. Let's go to the journal and check what happened here. Let me take all the posted, yes. And this is the one I think we posted from the work. So you can see that work number as well, 63. So when I go inside, you would see that the quantity, right? And that's been actually posted into the inventory. So that's actually following the cycle count plan. So that's that's how we can use, uh, utilize the cycle counting plan. So if you just to um, let you know what happened, what has been done. So basically we have executed the cycle count plan and earlier, let's go to the cycle count plan. That's what we did first, the cycle count plan. Uh, yeah, cycle count plan, that's what we did. So we executed the cycle count plan for the random, that's including A0001 and A0002. And uh, we got one work with a triple uh, two, and then we completed that using the, the mobile device. So once we completed, we actually did more than the specified quantity. And then it required approval because I'm not a super cycle count supervisor and my threshold is also not within the limit as well. So it's more than my limit. So it needs the approval. So the system, <clears throat> we must uh, uh, a cycle count supervisor or, or uh, uh, another person who have the access onto this uh, cycle counting you know, review to go and approve or accept or reject that count. So they accepted, it's correct. And <clears throat> that actually posted the uh, cycle, um, uh, the posted the counting journal as well behind the scene. That, that's what I've shown, shown earlier. So that's the process. So that's one for the cycle uh, counting and uh, so you can have different kind of cycle counting. So you can have, um, so I was talk talking about the cycle count plan. So I'll also touch upon quickly on the other options as well. Maybe, yeah, so that we can do. Um, so we have open cycle count uh, work and um, that's where the count uh, cycle count is generating. And then we have a closed cycle count work where once it's been completed, that will be there. And you have a uh, cycle count work pending review. So this is the, uh, the if you have a pending review that will come here. And um, so these are the, the ones that uh, you need to uh, see. So let me just quickly go to the closed one to show you quickly. Um, sorry, not that one, it's a closed one because there's no pending work, I've actually clicked that. So that's the one which we've uh, completed, right. Right, so that's that's good. Um, we've uh, done that. Let me show you another option, which is actually the spot counting. So the spot counting is where you can actually, uh, you know, the, um, the workers, maybe when they're uh, within the um, 
the warehouse. So you did, they could decide, or oh, maybe we need to do a spot counting for this location. You know, you can have that spot counting and see, or maybe maybe you find out something you know missing in that uh, item. So when you're doing a pick, we'll probably you know uh, figure out there's no uh, quantity. And then, so what happens is you can do a quick spot counting, right? So that's what you can do. Let me go back to the on hand just to see one of the on hand list which can help us uh, do a spot counting so that we see what we can use here. Um, maybe see 005. Find one location quickly. Yeah, so that will only have one item A triple O two. So yeah, that's fine. So let me take that location. Let's say count. I will say A triple O two. And need to have a little license plate. Okay, this is the license plate. And what's my quantity? 21. So in this situation, I would say it's 21. So no difference. Uh, say finished. So that's been completed. So let's see what has happened here. Let's go to the um, account. Uh, I think there's no nothing pending in this situation. So closed, closed cycle count work. Let's go here. Yep, so you can see that's been already closed. Let me go to there, show you what's up in that. Yep, so that's the one which we did using the what counting so nothing nothing changed so that's the one right so that's that's how um how we can utilize you know the spot counting and the cycle count plans there are heaps of other functionalities as well probably i'll quickly tell about some of them uh one of the other things that you would notice if you have used the abc um classifications as well you could be uh you could be utilizing that. Uh, so if you want to use ABC code margin or revenue or code value, so you could actually utilize these, these ones as well. So can be based on the ABC classification, or it could be uh, maybe you want to go by the zones. So it will it will depend as well. So what what you want, and there's one more thing as well: cycle count uh, threshold. Threshold as well. Quickly go to the threshold before I'm going to the last part of the session. So if you see the select items here, so you can actually select an item here uh for your threshold so what it does is that basically it'll if it's if you reach the threshold quantity zero in this situation it'll actually generate it, um the work as a cycle counting as well so there's a um, few options you can also uh, have a schedule as well cycle count so there are a lot of options that you can do so <clears throat> in these ones i haven't explained on these days between so if you want uh, your maximum number of counting cycle counts, how much 50 in this case and days between. So you have 90 days in between. So there are various uh, setups in that. So you might not have all time uh, today to discuss, but I think I have covered most of the uh, the stuff where, which we'll go in. I'll quickly go into the last um, part here. So there will be, there are some resources as well in here. And um, uh, thank you for, uh, everyone as well um so I'll, I'll look for any questions if there's any questions uh 
So thank you, Kason. Uh, you know, advanced warehousing is something which is really uh, something interesting for me. And uh, I'm also a consultant of SCM. So it it was always a fun, you know, uh, going through your session and it was really informative. So uh, we have some, uh, we have some questions for you. Uh, the first one is, uh, can this be, uh, let me just, yeah. Can this be done for a specific unit like only count cartons? Um, I'm just trying to see a specific unit. Yeah, you can do it like only count cartons. Mm, yeah, you can you can utilize always. There's there's a different ways of doing it as well. You can definitely um, there there are yeah there are workarounds you can do it. So there's filter codes as well. There's there's various filterations, uh, uh, you know, filters in the the warehouse. Um, if you yeah, you can you can possibly achieve it doing one one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kasun. Uh, there is one more question, uh, and the question is, what is the main difference between, or if you could just sh share a business scenario between a tech counting and a normal counting? So where we usually use tech counting. Yeah, tech counting is used in the containers as well. Like containers will be one of the examples that you can see the tech counting. Yeah, that's one example I can come up with. Yeah, and okay. usually you need to have that labels and the tags uh, basically. So you need to have a separate label. So if you search for the tags, uh, you could find uh, several tags. You know, in the oh, probably I'll have in the I'll have as well. Let me show you quickly. Um, yep. I think I have a slide here, so let me show that one. Yeah, this is one of the examples you can see the uh, inventory counting journal, so you can see that the tag counting, so this kind of a uh, tag you will have, uh, basically, so you'll have that, uh, you know, the quantity, part number, and it will be tagged into the physically, it will be uh, tagged. So that's the thing, yeah, during the counting, this will be the value of the value for the item ID and the count and quantity, and this has to have a physical tag on each item, yeah. Okay, thanks, Kasun. We have one more question. Yeah. So sometime it is observed that once the counting activity happens, the inventory quantity matches with the physical quantity. However, the financial amount mismatches with GL. What is the best way to handle it? The inventory quantity matches with the physical quantity. However, the financial amount mismatches. Yeah, this this would uh, yeah definitely will have, have a, a few ways of. Uh, doing it uh, there are differences definitely uh, in the gl mismatches and there will be a few other things that you can do uh, to do that yeah and uh, definitely running on some reports in the gl side as well to see the differences and then you can yeah it depends on the the scenario wise as well but you know high level yeah yeah Thanks, Kasun. Uh, we have some appreciation for you as well. Rajit Garj is saying that great session, Kasun. Very informative. So I think uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much for part of uh, Urdu Hindi Bootcamp 2021. And it's a pleasure to host you. Thank you. Thanks, Amar. And it was a really good. Uh...